first Friday of Lent, and that means fish fries at local churches as well as many firehouses. The big chain restaurants also have caught fish fever, of course. Yes, and the biggest of the chains owes its fish sandwich to a local man who saw an opportunity and wound up creating something memorable. Local 12 News reporter Joe Webb shows you what makes McDonald's filet of fish so Cincinnati. This McDonald's at North Bend in West Fork may look like a lot of other fast food restaurants, but it's not. History was made here. In January 1959, Lou Groen opened the Tri-State's first McDonald's, and he did a good business, but only six days a week. He needed something to compete on Fridays during Lent. As I said, 87% of the population in Munford Heights in 1960 were Catholic. No hamburgers on Friday. The locals either went to the Parish Fish Fry or Frisch's, which had a popular fish sandwich on its menu. He couldn't compete, and he knew that if he was going to survive, he had to, uh, he had to develop a product. It was, it was develop something or, or die. So Lou Groen developed a fish sandwich, but McDonald's creator Ray Kroc said he didn't want fish smelling up his restaurants. But when Croc saw how customers gobbled up Groen's final product, a fried fish patty on a steamed bun, half a slice of cheese and tartar sauce, he smelled success. It was the birth of the filet of fish. I'm hooked. Try America's best-selling fish sandwich, McDonald's filet of fish. He started development of the sandwich in 62, and then McDonald's put it on the menu in 1963. It was the first addition to McDonald's original menu four years before the Big Mac, eight before the Egg McMuffin. What Lou Groen started here on North Bend Road in 1962 didn't get him any extra money, but McDonald's has done okay with it. They sell an estimated 300 million fish sandwiches every year. But Lou Groen did all right. He eventually owned 43 McDonald's restaurants and sold most of them back to the company. His son and grandson still own 12 in northern Kentucky, and they sell a lot of filet of fish. On a typical typical day, you know, outside of Lent, we sell anywhere from you know 60 to over 80 a day at our highest volume restaurants. Um, I believe our, our 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 highest volume restaurant sells probably you know 5,500 a month. To think that it had its genesis right here uh, in our family in this market in this market is uh, something that I take pride in. And it still has the faithful coming back 50 years later. In Monfort Heights, Joe Webb, Local 12 News. And Lou Groen gets a shout out from none other than the Smithsonian for creating the filet of fish sandwich. You can check out original sales ledgers and read more about the sandwich's creation by just going to local12.com. Click on that red get it button, it'll take you right there. We have a local breaking news alert to tell you about now on Over the Rhine. A man has been shot and killed, apparently. Local 12's Angela Ingram is live there on the scene with the very latest for us. Angela, what can you tell us? Well, Rob, we're about a block and a half away from where this man's body is still lying on the corner. He was shot and killed at Hamer Street and back in Over the Rhine. And police tell us that this just happened a short time ago, maybe an hour ago, and there's still a huge police presence here. This is what it looks like right now. There was a lot of emotion as the man's family came here and they found out it was their loved one who was shot and killed. And police are telling us that he may have been working on a car when someone came up to him, there was some sort of an altercation, and then that end result was that he was shot at least one time. Again, he was never taken to the hospital. He died right here on the sidewalk. Police are telling us they do have suspect information, but at this point, they cannot release that information to us because they are still actively looking for that person. They feel at this point it may jeopardize the investigation. The good news, they are getting witness cooperation, and Rob, you know, sometimes that is just not the case. Now, down here in this area, let me tell you, there is a huge police presence, and that's because the homicide is not very far from Bachfest. So there were a ton of police down here anyway, and we were told by the captain of the district to let everybody know that things are going to go on as usual. Unfortunately, this did happen, but they do have a ton of police down here, not only for the public safety and for Bachfest, but also to investigate this homicide. As we get more information, we will bring that to you. Reporting live and over the Rhine, Angela Ingram. 
Ingram, Local 12 News. Rob, back to you. Ironically, in this broadcast a bit earlier, we did a story about crime and over the Rhine is down significantly, and then yes. this happens. There's no motive uh, known yet, right? That's exactly right, and that's what the captain told us. He said, we just talked to you about this, the fact that crime is down, and you have one beautiful day, and everyone's coming out. A city council person came up to me, was asking me what was going on, because he's here for Bachfest, and when I told him the news, it kind of, you could see it on his face that he was extremely disappointed, but at this point, police do not have a motive. All they can tell us is that there was some kind of altercation before the shot was fired. Angela, thanks very much. We'll have the latest for you tonight at 11. We'll be right back. Next ET, Hollywood, drugs, and murder. We're with the Soprano star once accused of killing a New York cop. And Spider-Man 2, our first look behind the scenes. Next ET. Tonight at 7.30 on Local 12. You've heard of hair transplants. Now, beard transplants. Does it hurt? No, it really doesn't. Men having cosmetic surgery to get a 5 o'clock shadow. Tonight at 7 on Local 12. It's award season, and some talented casts are getting honored for their performances off stage. Way off stage. Out here, there's plenty of thrills, action, and the occasional cliffhanger. And the stars are much brighter than the ones on the red carpet. But the best part? I get to be the paparazzi. See them now at the Jeep Award Season event. Right now, well-qualified lessees get this great low-mileage lease offer, or 1,500 total cash allowance. Does everyone go this far to bring you the tastiest wild-caught seafood? Long John Silver's does. And now Lobster Bites are back. Buttery, crispy, wild-caught, 100% Norway lobster tail. Catch them while they last. Long John Silver's. Think fish. Got a leak that just won't stop? Brandstetter's Kangaroo Roof can help. We use the highest quality materials and employ only the most skilled and trusted roofing craftsmen. Call 734-9000 now for a free 17-point roof inspection. Brandstetter's Kangaroo Roof. We hop to it. Elk and Elk, serious lawyers for serious injuries. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. Start your next big project with Irwin Hand Tools from Menards. We have a wide selection of chisels, pliers, clamps, and much more all on sale, including this drywall knife for only $3.99. Finish cleanup faster with a wet dry vac from ShopVac. They offer powerful, dependable performance for almost any cleaning task. This 12-gallon stainless steel model has a 6.5 peak horsepower motor and conveniently rolls to any mess. $99. Save big money at Menards. Greenpeace takes its war with P&G across the pond. Today, a protester in a gorilla suit was outside a Lud London ad agency that works with Procter & Gamble. Activists also set up a large wooden barricade across the company's main entrance. On Tuesday, nine protesters hung banners from the 12th floor of P&G's corporate headquarters downtown. Today, Cincinnati police officials said they had closed their investigation into the incident and do not anticipate filing any additional charges. From Local 12, the Weather Authority, this is Tim Hedrick's Hour by Hour Forecast. Has to be the pick day of the week uh, today, yeah. I think, and we're hoping that it's going to carry over into the weekend. You know, I, I don't think the weekend will be as nice as today, but it looks satisfactory. I, I, don't, I think, it, I think it's going to be just fine, especially when you compare it to the weather that we've had uh, recently. We want to take you out to St. Maximilian. Josh Knight has been out there in Westchester throughout the afternoon. This particular fish fry goes to 8 p.m. tonight. Look. They've been. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Hey. <laughs> wow. Now that's participation. Yeah, now they they um they usually serve about thirteen hundred a week. <laughs> Hi honey. <laughs> She's bringing you cake. Josh <laughs> Josh says he he gives it a glowing endorsement. I think he had some fried fish, some of the crab cake, shrimp, <laughs> grilled salmon, clam chowder. Hi! <laughs> Keep waving <laughs> for 20 minutes. That's Don't a great stop. Party, yeah. <laughs> That's a good group, group up there. Isn't it? That's Saint awesome. Maximilians. How about a rain or shine weather rhyme, everyone? This is what we have today from Shirley Shepard of Winchester, Ohio. As my head lay on the pillow, I have a weather dream. Tim is forecasting across my TV screen. The wind will blow a snowless path. The sun will warm the barren earth. The rain will ease the winter's wrath, and the spring will have an early birth. Thank you very much. If you have a rain or shine weather, I'm sending it to me at DopplerTim at WKRC.com. That 58, 
Finally, well above the average of 49 today. I think we'll be closer to that average or a little bit below this weekend. We'll go through those numbers. 56 degrees right now, and the dew point is only 28. So it's a dry air mass, but that will change a little bit over the next 24 hours. There's our 56. Muncie is 51. Warm to the south, where Louisville is 58 and Lexington has 56. We're 12 degrees warmer at 6 o'clock today than we were yesterday at 6 o'clock. There's nothing on live precision Doppler 12 HD. Some rain across South Carolina, North Carolina, in through Virginia. I think we see mostly clear skies for the next couple of hours, but then some cloud cover will start to invade from the northwest. This is a cold front that will come through the area tomorrow night, as it does tomorrow evening and tomorrow night, maybe a few spotty showers. Probably nothing worse than that. Here's that cloud cover strolling in during the nighttime hours tonight. Tomorrow, we have to go with considerable cloud cover, partly to mostly cloudy skies. And tomorrow night, maybe a few spotty showers across the area during the evening or during the overnight period, but not a lot of rain. This thing is a little bit starved for moisture. As we get into the day on Sunday, the sun reappears and temperatures not all that bad this weekend. I think we'll top out near 50 or better tomorrow and then mid to upper 40s during the day uh, as we get into Sunday. 40 degrees by midnight tonight. Temperature continues to fall down to 34, but remains above freezing all night long. Here's that planning forecast. 52 on Saturday, maybe a spotty evening shower. Seasonable on Sunday, 47, and then we pop back up to 60 on Monday and on Tuesday. Bright and mild, and then partly sunny during the day on Tuesday. Wednesday, a little bit of rain, changing to flurry activity. Cooler on Thursday and Friday, but not bitter cold. Low temperatures in the 20s and high temperatures in the 40s. So the next couple of days don't look too shabby. Only chance of rain the next 48 hours tomorrow evening and tomorrow night. But that's not a deluge. That's not a rain out. That's just a few spotty showers across the area. This has really contributed to your mood, too, I might add. The fish fries? No, 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 the weather. I mean, you're <laughs> just so much happier. Think they're still now. waving? Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably still waving. <laughs> that was so cute. Thanks, Tim. All right, Mike's in for Brad, and I'm wondering if the Bearcat seniors have come down off cloud nine yet. It's so interesting to go to those senior yeah. nights because you get different reactions. Titus Rubel was celebrating. Right. Yeah. Justin Jackson, Sean Kilpatrick. Sad. Sad. Yeah. Crying. Yeah. I mean, really bawling, but, but it worked. Yeah. Whatever emotion they had, they, they worked. What a night in Clifton where the Bearcats honored their five seniors by playing like a team that wants to win a conference championship this season. The emotion of the senior night ceremony seemed to get the best of Justin Jackson and Sean Kilpatrick, but when the ball went in the air, they were at their very best. UC raced out to an 18-4 lead using that raw emotion and the crowd to nearly run Memphis out of the gym. But the game settled down, it usually does, and that's when the seniors really picked it up. Kilpatrick finished with a game-high 34, Justin Jackson with 13 and 9 rebounds, and Titus Rubles right there went for a career-high 24. Now it's on to New Jersey for the season finale at Rutgers with a chance at the conference title. It's an accomplishment, and being able to have that in our possession and, and really go, go out there and, and grab a win is something that we, we really need to do. I mean, because we know where to place us with um, seeding, and, and we know that it's something that our seniors deserve. So being able to go out there and, and get that win is important. All right, Reds back at it in the Cactus League today, splitting up the squad for games against Chicago and Seattle. Reds have lost four in a row in Arizona, so here's two chances to end that streak. In the game against the White Sox, Jay Bruce homered, and the ball apparently still hasn't landed, but they needed more home runs. Reds dropped this one to the Shy Sox 4-3. In the other game, Chris Heisey homered twice against the Mariners. Reds had a big lead, let it all go away with a five-run M's sixth. It is now 10-9, Reds in the bottom of the ninth. Mike Leake pitched in the Chicago game today after missing a start with an abdominal injury. Went two innings, allowed two hits with a strikeout. Now the process of improving upon last year's 14 wins can begin in full. There's always something to learn from. I mean, as far as last year, I mean, just it helped getting my changeup back in there and, and 